who come before your throne of mercy, confessing our sins to you. Your word says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So Father, we confess our sins, O oh God, that we've committed in thought, in word, and in deed. By the good we have done, and even those good things that we have not done, O oh God, through our ignorance, through our weakness, and even through our own deliberate fault, O oh God. Father, your word says that if we confess, that you will forgive us, and you will cleanse us, O oh God. So we come this morning, O oh God. Submitting our sins, individual sins, before you even now. So let us in silence confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness.
Lord, I lift Sorry. your name on high. Okay. Lord, I lift your name on high.
meeting me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress, to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, for my youth. Together, upon you I have leaned from my will. It is you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually in you. Will you please stand for it? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and never shall be. Word without him. has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. 
and you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that you will, the things, sorry, that we have heard he do, did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. And there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath. 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 Sorry, Zarephath. In Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of Christ. Please be seated. It's so strange when we go like um, what we hear from God. The very love of man. <laughs> oh Lord. This morning, my brothers and sisters, what would God have me share with us this morning? Now, wasn't any of the scriptures that we would have read this morning that was on the plan, but he would have directed me to second revelation. Revelation chapter two, that is. Second revelation, right? Verse 7, part B. And it reads, To everyone who conquers, King James Version says, To, every, to him who overcomes, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. To him, that overcomes, I will give him to eat of the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us a word your return. Speak to us, O God, in ways only you know how. Let us receive from you this morning, O God, that which you have sent for us. I pray that none of us, O God, be here the same way that we came in, but that we would have received from God our Savior. So, Father, may the words of my mouth and that meditation of all our hearts, O God, be pleasing to you, our strength and our salvation. Amen. I want to play for you a song before. I begin and listen to the words of this song as it ministers to us before we get into our moment.
situations in your life. Now straight, eh? This week, this was one of the passages of scripture for my daily Bible study. And for nothing it would leave me. This was since Tuesday. And for nothing it would leave me. I tried to use the scriptures for today, but God wants me to emphasize this morning that there are situations that some of us are going through have been going through for quite some time now. And those situations are swallowing us whole. Those situations are controlling how we respond to everyday life. And he is saying this morning, you're better than that. Tell somebody next to you, you're better than that. Because hear what? You are a conqueror. Okay, okay, okay. Let me hear it. I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. God made you, my brothers and sisters, to overcome your situations. And hear what he says. If you would overcome your situations, I will allow you to eat from the tree of life. But hear what? I ask God, so what happens to those who don't overcome? What happens to that person? Because there are a lot of those persons sitting in our pews, or whether, well, now we're on, on Zoom, they're looking at us via the social media, sitting there and unable to move or change their situations. And what God is saying is that they need to change the way they think. Amen. The Bible says in, in Romans 7 25, it is with your mind that you serve God. And if your mind is bombarded by things that are, let's say, unpleasant, because hear what? We have allowed doubt to come in, we've allowed fear, anxiety. Hear what? Um, Sorry, I don't see them. Alright. We have allowed unforgiveness. And guys, hear what? Between a mosquito, just a question. Between a mosquito and an elephant, who can be most people in the world? A mosquito, not so. And here what God was saying to us is the small things that causes the biggest problems. It is the small things. Because here what? I am um, literally this week, an incident happened that, that happened since 2007. I was going to UE. In my last year, I'll never forget this day. I was coming down the highway, playing worship music in my car. Song was Power of Your Love. And God started to download. If, 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 if you have that relationship, you will know what download means. Right? But God just really started to download. And I called Anna. That time he wasn't married as yet. I called Anna and I started to just pour out to Anna what God was sharing with me. And Anna was like, that's it going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, man. That dug deep within me. Now, I thought, you know, small thing, I let that go. Until the other day when I was preparing, tears came to my eye like as though it happened yesterday. Because it was the small things, guys, that seems to keep us in a position where we are unable to move further than what actually wants us to go. Here what happened. I thought everything was okay. And I want to know, Lord, you know, as a 
you know, for the, for the longest while I've been here, I'm ready to move on to the next level. And he says, well, move on to the next level. I said, but how? It seems like I'm being stuck somewhere. I had no clue that something as small as that was still bothering me. Because in me, right, the little things, like guys, the little things again, in me, I thought it was a small thing. You know, that is just how she responded. But here, what happened? Because of that, the sermon, you see these sermons that my head has been preaching? It does sound way better in my head, you know? Way, way better. Because when I actually want to talk and express myself, you know what comes to mind? That is what you call me more. Yeah. yeah. That is what you call me more. Because at that time, when God was downloaded and pouring out, and I was pouring back out now, that is what you call me more. That dug deep. And it's only when I came face to face with that, Am I now able to even talk about it? Because that would have brought tears to my eye. And most of us are in a kind of similar situation. Now it probably wouldn't be something as simple as that, you know. But whatever your situation is, that God has brought you to this point that you keep coming to over and over and you want to move on, but you seem stuck. You don't know how to move on because this thing this thing, I, I can't move because this thing is right there. I want to go on. But this thing that I'm unable to overcome. And last time I, I ministered here, I stood up and my mind sat down. And when I came to the pulpit, I had no clue. Up to this day, I have no idea what I said on that pulpit. Because I know God is ready for a different level of something. But I want to be conscious and aware of what he's doing in my life. How many of you in your life with the situations that's going on around you want to break free from that thing that's keeping you back? Yeah? yeah. Some people, okay, probably one or two persons want to break free from it. Yeah. Because here, yeah, what the thing is, that if you don't break free from that, guys, I don't know if you'll get to eat from the tree of life. If that thing that you refuse to overcome, and hear what I'm saying, you refuse, because hear what I've known about my God, I've learned this about Him, that He gives us every opportunity to sort those situations out. He gives us opportunity, whether it's a bad relationship that you need to fix, whether it's a mindset that you need to change. Whatever it is that you're going through, you have to go through it. You have to face it. And you have to overcome that situation. After service this morning in Kelshaw, why I was actually late is that after the service, a young man came and he, he was like, how oh, long did you know? For over 40 years, He's been going through the same thing over and over and over and over and over and can't understand why. And he wants it to change, but he doesn't know how. How many persons in our congregations are in quiet desperation, praying and hoping that something happens that will change the outcome of their situations? How many of us here this morning just hoping that God will do something, anything, Lord, to change their situation. Hear what I've also learned. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is good, but it's not a strategy. You want to change your situation. He gave you the power to change it. He gave you the power to change it your situation. So you are an overcomer. You are a conqueror. The thing is, do you believe that? It doesn't matter what we think, you know, anybody else think. It's what you believe about you. That's going to be your reality. You live at the level in which you think. 
and you think at the level at which you, you read, what are you putting in here? We complain a lot about things not going my way here. I remember when I was living my night in laws. I always used to complain, it's, it's like we have a catering, a catering business here because the mountain of ways that you just have to wash every single day in that house, it's crazy. And sometimes three times a day. And I'm the person who washes the ways most of the times because I like a very clean kitchen. Okay? Very clean. And I would complain. This thing always have ways, always have ways, always have ways. Until I said, Lord, why, why, why nobody doesn't want to wash the ways? And I, again, it's a simple thing, right? I decided to change my perspective. Instead of complaining about it, I started to say, I get to wash ways. I get to wash these ways. And I get to wash these ways. Until you know what I love happening? I had to get to wash anyways. Because I changed my perspective. And guys, it's the same thing that is in alignment there for you. You change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Let me say that again. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Anybody have any experiences with that before? Yeah? When you change the way you look at things? <laughs> <laughs> right? The things you look at, they definitely will change. And what God is calling us to is that those, those, those things, those little things in our lives that we allow to just settle there. Right? Because, you know, to you, the person, the person is studying me again, but, but I knew. You know, we move past that. But it's bothering you. Where's the point in bringing it up again? But it's bothering you. Understand something. The idea is not that you're being petty about things. But in order for you to move on to another level, you need to deal with that devil. It needs to be different level, different devil. Not same level, different level. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what God is calling us to this morning is that you have certain situations, certain small things, you know, that are just keeping you back from that extra to move to that other level. Because here, what? I have it here for you guys. I have it here just, just to get, if you were just have this one thing. That's what the Bible says, you know, and when we were talking about in Revelation, this one thing you lack, to him that overcome. And I have equipped you to overcome your situations. The thing is, whoo, hey, you just showed me pride, boy. We don't want nobody to know what we're going through. We have to keep it to ourselves. Here, yeah, what the Bible reminds us in Proverbs He who has who counsels himself as a fool for a counselor. You need to share, guys, what is going on with you with a more knowledgeable person. A more knowledgeable. Share what is your experience, what are you going through to help you overcome that. So I was talking to the young man and he was saying, but I've been in this and head of that and this and that and the other, but I always feel not good enough. So I asked him a question. What is your personal development plan like? He said, what? What is your personal development plan like? What books are you reading to become better? Who are you counseling with on a regular basis to see whether you are growing or you are actually dying? Who are you being mentored by? And don't come and tell me when I just read the Bible. Satan does do the same thing. 
you need more than just simply reading the Bible. In order to deepen a relationship with God, guys, you need somebody who has a deeper relationship with God. So who are you sharing your experiences with? Bouncing your ideas off of. To become better, you literally have to work at it. Challenges in life will always come. And everybody knows that. The thing is, how will you handle it? Most of us, and I'm going to say this boldly, most of us have settled for a good life. Things are good. And, and anytime people ask, how are you going? I'm good. Anybody ever realize when they ask me how I'm going, what's my response? God is saying, don't settle. Don't leave behind a great life that I have for you for the good life. Because good is the enemy of great. That great life that I have in store for you is not just for you. The persons that are in your circle of influence is waiting for you to come to fullness. And it's only when you come to fullness can they now participate in, in, in the food that God has for them. But because we settle, we become comfortable, God is unhappy. What you're happy when he's disappointed in. That he needs us to change our thinking. To overcome those situations. To rise to another level in him. So that you could be more than you are today. My brothers and sisters, a good life doesn't happen by chance. It happens by change. But the thing is, change comes with challenge. So you need to challenge yourself to change. And how are you going to challenge yourself to change? It's every single day being intentional about what you want to accomplish and what God has in store for you. Commit yourself to reading. He says in his book, my people suffer for a lack of knowledge. We can't move because we don't know. How are you going to change something that you don't know about? And where are you going to get this information? You need to read outside of what your, 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 your job or whatever it is you're accustomed to doing. You need to change that because you know what? If you keep doing what you've been doing all the time, you're going to keep having that same result. To have a different outcome, you need to do something different. And as a church community, God is calling us to do things differently. If we want these young people to be stronger when they get older, because here what they need to be strong by the time they get of age, we have to get better because they will be learning from us. And if we're not getting better, then guess what? They won't get better. And then what's going to happen? The tradition is going to filter right down to nothingness. There's this thing for the past couple of months what I've been talking to me about oral traditions. Oral traditions that are not being passed on. Whereby we have to learn everything from scratch when it's not supposed to be like that. It is our responsibility as all the folks in the community to teach the young people why this is important. Like I was telling my wife the other day, I said just now, give or take the next five to ten years, all us give might be a thing of the past. You'll hear about this all us give thing because at the end of the young people really understand what that's all about. And a lot of the things that we do would be things of the past. And nobody will know about them. Why? Because it hasn't been taught to them. And they can't vex with them because they don't know. And we call them disrespectful and they don't know this and they don't know. But they don't know. 
And who is to teach them? That's our responsibility. So for us to overcome our limiting beliefs first, we need to come face to face with God and believe in His promises. Because the promises of God are what? Yea and Amen. 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 It's yes or no. And His promises are there for every single one of us. And He needs each and every one of us to overcome our situations so that we could be better and the church community could be better. And therefore, we will have a better nation of Trinidad and Tobago. So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to stop there this morning because God is calling us to a different level whereby you need to come to terms with where you are in Him. That you need to realize that settling for good is not good enough. He has a great life in store for you. Go and receive your greatness. For well, that tree of life, as, as Paul once preached a message, she said, you'll be going to hell with heaven on your mind. That's not the reality we want for ourselves. So guys, lean on God. As the scripture said this morning, lean on Him. Let us pray. Mr. God, thank you for your spoken word. Your word is life, and your word continues to be strong in our lives. Father, I pray even now, God, for each person that was under the sound of my voice here this morning, God, that they, oh God, may look at their situations, oh God. And put things in place to overcome their limiting beliefs, their limiting mindsets, the unforgiveness, the doubts, the anxiety, the whatever it is, oh God, that seems to be holding them prisoner, oh God, to their current situation. And I pray, oh God, that you would do a different work in them this morning, oh God. You have already empowered them, oh God, Father, I ask you to show them, oh God, the power that is within them. And that they don't just hold it in, oh God. But that they exercise the power that you have given them. To transcend their beliefs, oh God. That they, oh God, may live lives, oh God. That you will be proud to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Father, I pray, oh God, for this church community. That as we wrestle with all our beliefs, oh God that we would stand firm on your word. Father, I pray, O oh God, that we learn to overcome past hurts, past experiences, O oh God, and to, to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, for the way forward. Father, that you would continue to lead us to green pastures, O oh God. Father, I pray for the leaders of this church community, O oh God, that they may Govern, O oh God, with wisdom, with honesty, and with compassion. I pray for the leaders of our nation, O oh God, that they may serve the people, O oh God, and not themselves. I pray for those in the medical field, O oh God, who the, the frontliners, Father, who put their lives at risk every day, O oh God, in this pandemic time. That you would Hold them close, O oh God, and let your love surround them. That you would keep them healthy and strong, God. So that they may execute, O oh God, their task that you have given to them. And that they will do it, O oh God, with grace. Father, I pray for those at this church community who may be celebrating any of life's successes, be it birthday or anniversary or promotion or anything, O oh God. Thank you, God, for their service. Father, I pray, O oh God, that they, as they continue to grow and build themselves, O oh God, that they not forget you. So, Father, 
I commit this congregation and all its members into your hands. In the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
promise you and you to to bring us churches, views, and concerns. After which, the Lord will come with the Lord and be received. We 
are doing from I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, you know, but I'm just saying we spoke. We spoke. You're not raising up our people to really serve God because after you fed me to the power of the Holy Spirit, I feel like you've had enough. Help us, oh Lord. Oh God and Heavenly Father, we come before you today as a people. We ask you, O oh Holy Spirit, to move through our homes and our churches and in our lives. No one loves someone who talks the truth. You are cast out. You are driven. You are always not appointed by man. But who needs to be confirmed and appointed by man when God moves in a mysterious way? When he lifts up the lowly in due season. Weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And when God puts the words in your heart and your mouth, you cannot sit down and be stifled. We pray every time if our people who are called by my people who are called by my name, but only words we say. We are humble ourselves. We ain't seeking your faith. We not definitely turn from our wicked ways and we want you to hear us. But I ask you to be your word to forgive us. Help us. We don't even know how to really start a virtual and continue. We start the virtual comes on the school, but we don't know how to continue to see to reach the young ones and they're eager. They're eager to hear the little things that people plan for them virtually. We don't even know how to be constant in doing that. So what is this about? We really serving God? Or we just want to show what we can do at a point in time when it pleases us? Father, we saw this school long ago with our old lady on the house where all the village children went. We talk of oral tradition. Nobody wants to hear oral tradition because the ancestors live in us and we don't even want to awaken them. We don't even want to raise the spirit of the Almighty God within them. We don't even want to learn from our past and go forward in victory with Jesus. We don't want that. We want to stifle everything that was in our spirit to make us strong. Father, have mercy upon us and help us. This is the beginning of a new week. We come back Sunday again, maybe doing the same thing because nobody wants to hear you. Nobody wants to hear you. And what a little child says it makes nothing but you said in your word, and a little child shall be there. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Help us to be able to forgive ourselves first. Then we can forgive others. Help us to be able to move on and build a church that will be well pleasing in your sight. Help us to understand when we put God is a God of order. God is a God of order. He didn't say let the darkness overcome the light. He said let there be light and the light overcome the darkness. And then he put two in a separate way for us to be able. He put stars. He didn't need the darkness dark. He put the moon and the stars. He gave us light in all ways. Help us to see the light. We are a rebellious people. We don't like instruction. We don't like order. We don't like peace. We don't like harmony. Man ways are very evil and wicked. Help us, oh God, because we are living in the end time, well, the beginning, the middle of the end. We don't even know because we are so far gone from you. We don't even know what's going on in our whole being. We don't even know. But all we know is that you are supreme. Whether we try to be like God and we sin because we are not God. We are God's own chosen people if we accept Jesus Christ and we move within the alignment of the Almighty by the Holy Spirit, which God, Jesus said, He will go to the Father and He will leave us, He will leave us, he will leave us, he will leave us guideless. He, does, he is a God of order. Feed us, O oh Heavenly Father. Teach us, O oh Heavenly Father. And like Samuel, help us to have that mind that is and the willingness of Samuel 
to serve you in spirit and in truth. To the power of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, we call upon you today to answer our prayer. So Karen would know. Yeah, I know Karen. She's the one who alerted me. So let's pray for Sister Pat Crawford. Other members who will not be well at this time. Um, and also want to say Brother Victor had surgery on his eyes on Friday. And he is at home and he is resting comfortably. And he will have you know, at least a five or two weeks you know, of recuperation. So, so let's extend our work. Uh, prayers to brother uh, also. Whether it's an anniversary, any birthday, any anniversary, any congregation for this week, or okay, we move on. I'm inviting you to our, our weekly press service on Tuesday at 6 p.m. This week is to be led by the youth of the service, of the circuit, sorry. Bible studies on Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. via Zoom. And it's an interesting Bible study. I think we all need to, to get in right now in the midst of you know, speaking about God's unconditional love. Our unconditional love also. The only way we can show that is show it to our fellow brothers and sisters. Talking about it is one thing, expressing it is another. Or you can carry the Bible studies on Saturday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. And grand fasting is held every last Sunday of the month. I have a note here that the meeting of the Arandu Committee 
which includes computational storage members of the Dance Community and other leaders in, to discuss a proposal by the Eden Center. It has come up again. I will notify you all via WhatsApp message to be chaired by the civic steward and Reverend Nika. Came up and we are asking for another meeting with our community. Why I thought there's a there's a letter here from Superintendent Minister and Mr. Fitzgeorge. It reads, Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you in these unsettled times. We thank God that we have completed another year in the connection. May God's grace continue to serve by the leading and equipping our members who are waking compassion as we navigate our lives around this baby virus. Indeed, the COVID-19 virus has brought major changes globally in the South Caribbean district. And in particular, the South China Circuit has had to do its part in response to the pandemic. The harrowing experience of the past two years has been a unique opportunity to revisit the many aspects of our lives as we speak to serve God in this part of his kingdom. Brothers and sisters, you may or may not know that the circuit's annual budget is currently facing a deficit of approximately $40,000. This does not include the three circuit lenses which are in urgent need of repair. An estimate for such repairs is $500,000. While we are currently engaged in discussions regarding fundraising, we need your help to make this effort go further. In this regard, we are kindly asking for a contribution of $2,000 to help achieve our mission. Note that this will be a separate contribution from your weekly or monthly tithe and offering towards foundational assessment. We bless God for your proof of faith, worship, and stewardship as we invite you to utilize any of the following options. One, an online transfer to Republic Bank Limited, checking our account number, you can have it after, in the name of the Methodist Street South Trinidad Circuit. Two contributions can be dropped off at the circuit office, 24 hours from that in San Fernando. Three contributions can be lodged with respective congregational stewards. And four contributions can be made in the month using our friend ones to do. May God in Christ honor your sacrifices by returning to you tenfold. Yours in Christ, everyone, could be the superintendent minister, Methodist Church, South Trinidad Circuit, and co signed by Sister Stacy Clark Dorridge, and Sister Hayes Lansman to the Circuit Stewart, Methodist Church, South Trinidad Circuit. So, I put you, I put your three on it. We need to do it not collectively so that we can improve on what we do. There's something. We can go, we cannot do the same thing repeatedly and expect to get a different result. You know what the definition of that is. So we will look forward to this, this congregation at least needs to sit and meet and treat with what is before us. God is calling upon us to, to, to change and to move, to move in a particular direction. So we need to, each of us need to consult, find out what God is asking of us in this time. Thank you for being here and we now have our time now.
we thank you for this gift of offering God before you. We thank you, Father God, that it may be used to build up your kingdom here in this part of the vineyard. We thank you for all who were able to, to give, even the smallest might, even those who may not have had anything to put in their basket. I know they, they would have given from their hearts. So Lord, we thank you for each and every one presenting this service, each and every one who have been doing us on the virtual platform. We thank you for joining us, and we trust God that we'll have a blessed day and a blessed week to come. This I ask in Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. Amen. Standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages that his praise is written. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises.
continue to be in your presence, oh God, as we go through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.